student at Queen Mary University, uh, and my PhD I'm looking at uh, easing uh, technology adoption for older people. I'm also a game designer and developer. So um, one of the main questions I get when I bring up the subject is why do we care about the current generation of older people? And that's typically we're talking uh, 60s and 70s and up, and then there's older, older, 80s and 90s. And just because like, they're pre-digital, when they die out, it's not gonna matter. Uh, my response to that is one, you're presuming that all your sexy little toys and digital as we know it today is still gonna be relevant when hopefully we are all older people. Uh, secondly, I think it's really important, particularly um, coming from a developer standpoint, um, I feel like digital or digital li literacy really means we are being trained by the uh, developers, me included in that bunch, to accept things that are easy for us to code versus what is easy for us to use. I think it's really important to capture the people that really are more about the human side of things because I'm interested in making things more human. And third, it's really important uh, for me because uh, I personally do not want to be marginalized and uh, excluded as I grow older. So this is a very personal project for me. So uh, this is what a lot of our pre people's preconception notions are of older people. Um, this is how sometimes I feel that, you know, sort of, you know remember how things got started. Um, so the way I'm looking at my research, there's a group, a uh, company here in London called Good Gym. And what they do is instead of going to a gym and running on the treadmill, we, uh, it's about get out and get active in your community. And one of the schemes Good Gym has is called the Coach Runner Scheme. So coaches are older people who, for various reasons, may not get out much or have many visitors. And runners are people who want to be active. So the runner, uh, we pair them up once a week. The runner visits the coach. Uh, it's mutually beneficial. You're motivated to run once a week because Millie's waiting for your visit. Millie gets a visit. We have about 60 coaches and 120 runners now. And uh, of our 60 coaches, one uses email, and that's because he's so hard of hearing he can't use the phone. The rest all use and the phones, particularly landline phones. Um, even the ones that have mobiles, they think of them as emergencies, and most of the time they don't even know they're in their house. They're aware of computers and tablets and things of that nature, but it just feels like something not accessible. So it's important, you know, this is where I think it's important um, about working with something like Good Gym is they're not, their goal isn't about integrate, you know, training on technology. I volunteered at uh, some of the technology training centers for older people around London as part of one of my studies. And while they have good intentions, and as other research has shown, there's limited reach, there's a lot of presumption, and it's presuming A, people can get there, B, they're interested in the things you think they want to learn. So. What I'm looking at is that uh, there's theories of, uh, you know, to, like anything that if we want to adopt, it usually comes from a place of something, uh, a place where we feel is of, of value to us. And that's usually what's missing in the dialogue uh, of these outlier or excluded communities. So uh, people with disabilities also aren't part of the digital conversation. So um, in talking with our, so I did a participatory approach. Um, which that, that's different than user-centered uh, design, that's di uh, and that's different than UX and all that. User-centered, you build something, you give it to people, ask them to use it, you make changes. Participatory, I've been working with the older people all the way through. So the ideas that we came up with, they contributed to or, or, or drove. And I think that's something that's also missing from our industry, industry development of digital technologies. And a lot of times it's sitting around assuming or uh, or, you know, in Apple's case, dictating what we think people want. And if we put in a sexy enough package, then uh, we'll figure out a way to use it. So uh, w in our conversation, we thought maybe the television might be a, a way to communicate between our runners and coaches, but it became very clear that was sacred technology. They knew how to use it, even if it was a complicated mode, they had their way of using it. Uh, didn't want to miss my shows, don't mess with it. Uh, and what came out of the work, one of our workshops is several people were interested in where their runners were running. So then they were saying, oh, if I could see things like on a digital picture frame. And so this game that came, this gave us the gateway of introducing the tablet into the home. So instead of saying, here's a tablet, it does 100 things, and they're like, I don't know how any of these 100 things fit my life. What we've developed is a tablet, put it on a picture frame, so it has a context in the home. It uh, can sit on the table. Uh, this, uh, so it, the way the visits work is this is, this is the runner. whether because of a doctor's appointment or someone 
unexpectedly visiting on the coach side or being late on work for uh, the runners. Uh, and then it works with the, the traditional uh, clock in between visits. Uh, when the run actually happens, so on the runner's side, they have their mobile app, they can start the run. It switches over, the coach can stop them coming to their house to get notification. They're 12 minutes away, 10 minutes away, things of that nature. Uh, and the runner, from a running standpoint, gets to capture uh, their, uh, the, their, their run so their coach are able to improve themselves or help their coach. So the idea behind this is start off with something very specific and discreet like the, the gym app. Uh, maybe add more features if they want them, but then uh, hopefully over time, maybe they're like, um, I have heard about this email, or I do want to try online shopping. So, they, so that uh, be having a meaningful interaction would then promote uh, engaging in uh, other technology. So the, the idea behind the Lotus Flower, do something very specific, and then slowly over time open up options. The next stage that I'm moving on to is trying this method with open hardware and uh, soft circuits and things of that nature, because um, you know, the promise behind the, those, the open source community is that it democratizes it, opens up, and once again, the older population is a part of that conversation, so I wanna see if I can find ways of pulling that in, way in and meaningful. So that's me, if you have any questions or not. I'm good, or we can get the next person. <laughs> We'll bring up the next one. Thank y'all for coming. So we're running a little bit early, which is unusual. Um, Actually, better turn this off recording. Sorry. Uh, so we've got five minutes uh, till the next talk, which is uh, Hacking the Body with Camille Baker and Kate. Um, so wait around or come back there.